taken 10 days and a lot of blood, sweat and tears, but after walking 161 miles, today the Trentham 10 arrived in Westminster. Well, they have handed in a petition to the Prime Minister demanding their school stays open. Our political correspondent, Alex Forrest, reports. It was a welcome they'd spent 10 long days and 161 miles walking for, and many of the so-called Trentham 10 couldn't hide their emotions. It's just that the, uh, the community has pulled together. All the people have come and yeah. turn up, welcome us here. Just go and say no more marvels. We just need to keep the school open. We are the Trentham 10! The walkers have the war wounds to prove how seriously they take keeping Trentham High School in Stoke-on-Trent open. It's the toughest thing I have ever done, and halfway through I didn't think I was going to make it. Friday night, I was at a and &E. I was in tears, but I was so determined to do it. Two, one, yeah! Ten days ago, parents and grandparents of pupils at the school began their long journey. The City Council wants to replace 17 secondary schools in the area with 13, and Trentham is one of the casualties. I think what I'm looking for really out of today is for the elected mayor to sort of put his hands up and say, yep, yeah, it was a miscalculation, we, we perhaps misunderstood the, the figures, the numbers. This is a wrong decision. We need to give Trenton the chance to prove that it really can be a good, successful school. It was a parent's question about the future of this school that I put to the Prime Minister that helped to kick-start this war. And this was his response. Certainly, I'll look at any uh, case that is brought to me. So in a final push to take their message to the very top, campaigners handed in a 12,000 signature petition to number 10. He actually mentioned um, Trentham High to you on the train when you interviewed him and I'm hoping that he will take on board what we've done. We've delivered this petition but we've walked here, we've walked 160 miles. He's been receiving hundreds of letters every day telling him about the school so I really do hope they'll listen. Dan Jordan ending that report there from Alex Forrest who joins us now from Westminster. So Alex, the question is, is this protest going to make any difference? Well, Anna, obviously the campaigners think it will, but what about the government? Well, after that petition had been handed in to number 10, Andrew Adonis, who is the school's minister, met with them and he promised them that talks would take place with the council. But of course we will look at it because of the strength of feeling that's been expressed and, and uh, I've given an assurance to the parents that we will do that and that we will discuss it with Stoke-on-Trent Council. But at the end of the day, it's a decision for Stoke-on-Trent Council to make, having satisfied themselves that they've taken proper account of, of local feelings on this issue. Now, Alex, Trentham High School isn't the only one under threat, is it? No, that's right. The council wants to close another three secondary schools and on top of that, it wants to replace another five with academies. Now, only yesterday, the council announced another reorganisation of education in Stoke-on-Trent, this time primary school education, with two primary schools threatened with closure, including this one, Heron Cross. Andrew Whitehead is the vice chair of governors there. There's nothing wrong with this school. It's a successful school. It's a school where we have children that are beginning to achieve. It's a school that's on the up. It's got roles that are increasing. We have parents coming out of area into this school with their children. This, this is a fantastic building with wonderful resources, a great playing field, fantastic community spirit, and they want to take it away. Well, this evening, the council gave us a statement in which it said that it fully appreciates the concerns parents hold over the school closures, but that falling school pupil numbers in the city mean that we can no longer sustain the number of schools in place. It goes on to say that it will use the £250 million from central government to help reorganise education in Stoke-on-Trent. But as we saw today, feelings running very, very high across the city. And in fact, we know that some families are uh, now enacting legal proceedings against the council to try to get them to change their mind. Alex Forrest and Westminster, thank you very much.